Welcome to Chapter 2, CSS Inline Styling, Part 2. Chapter 2, Essential Outcomes. Students communicate, collaborate, create, and apply critical thinking skills through project-based learning by A, constructing, computing, and designing basic web pages, B, empowering and challenging each other to create unique designs, C, demonstrating knowledgeable web page structure, D, being responsible web designers and digital citizens, E, sharing the innovative designs via global networking, F, linking keywords to project application. Welcome to CSS Styling. With the introduction of HTML5, all aesthetic styling features now use CSS, so we no longer use HTML to actually style our web pages. There are three different types of CSS styling. Inline style sheets. These are inserted right inside the HTML tag. We have internal style sheets. These are placed between the opening and closing head tag and within the, the style tag that falls between the head, opening head and closing head tag. And then we have external style sheets, which largely creates a text file that houses all of our CSS coding and can be imported into a document by linking. The hierarchy of applying CSS styling. When a browser reads code, it goes down the page reading each line of text line by line and responds accordingly. You do not see this happen because it is done so fast. When dealing with CSS styling, the browser will first apply the external text file. Then it will apply the internal style sheets. And last, it will apply the inline style sheets. So when it comes down to it, if you have special coding in the inline style sheets, it will override the internal and the external. Block quote. A block quote is used whenever you want to indent a paragraph five spaces on the left and on the right. Block quotes are used to make text stand out on a page which is a little different than the way paragraphs look. You never use a paragraph tag with a block quote because they do different things. Paragraphs set up paragraphs. Block quote in dense paragraphs. The block quote is a paired tag and you have the opening and the closing block quote. Bold and italic. You use bold and italic to accentuate a word or a phrase on a page. It is considered, they are considered paired tags. Your bold darkens text and your italic slants text to the right. When you use them together, you reverse the order in your closing tags. So if I do bold and then italic and then put my text, I will reverse the order at the end by putting my italic first, followed by the bold. Never use an underline since this is reserved for links. The mark tag. The mark tag highlights important words or phrases on the web page. It is most often used in, on the internet to highlight price cuts. It is a paired tag, so you have your opening mark tag and your closing. The default color for your highlight is yellow. If you want the highlight to be a different color, then you will use the mark tag followed by the style property, and then the value would be background color and then the color that you want your highlight to be. Font size. There are three different ways you can change font size. You can use pixels, 
100 pixels are equal to roughly 1.041 inches, which itself is equal to roughly 2.65 centimeters. You can use EM, and EM is equivalent to the width of a letter M. EMs allow you to change the size of the text relative to the size of the text in the parent element. One EM is equivalent to the standard 12-point use in Microsoft. This is the highly recommended um, font size because EMs will adjust to the window of your screen. So if you're using a phone or a tablet or a PC, the font size will adjust accordingly to the size of the screen. You can also use percents. Um, percentages change the font size based on percentages. This is not usually recommended for font size. Styling the font or text on the page. There are two different types of font families that can be used, the serif font and the sans serif font. The serif font has hooks at the end of each letter. Usually, they're usually used to show contrast or to highlight a small section on a page. If you notice to the right, you're gonna see little hooks on the A. Sans serifs, on the other hand, do not have any hooks at all at the ends of the letters. Sans serif is usually used for the major type of font because it is easy to read. If you look at the difference between the two fonts, you're gonna see that the sans serif, the bottom image, does not have any hooks. Rules for the font family. Text on the page uses sans serif. Why? Easier to read. Headings on a page use serif font. Why? Makes the heading stand out on the page and it is a small amount of text. So if we look at this example, we are going to see that hello world is serif. Um, our next heading is what is lorem ipsum? That is also serif because they are headings. If we look at the list and we look at the text on the page, we're going to see that they use sans serif. This follows the good rule of um, web design. Use of Google fonts. Um, another option for fonts is the use of Google fonts. These are online and available free of charge. The positive reason to use Google fonts is because Google fonts are stored in the cloud and they override the default settings on the computers. So if you have a special font that you're using for your website and that font is not on the computer that is opening up your website, it will revert to the font, default font setting on the computer, which may make a, your the, your actual website look different and doesn't have the aesthetic features that you want. So if you're looking at a real specialized font, using Google fonts is the best way to go because again, it overrides the default settings on computers. To access Google fonts, please go to https colon slash slash fonts.google.com. Once it opens, you can scroll down and you can see and look for fonts that you might like to use on your website. Chapter two, part two quiz. It's now time for you to review for your keyword quiz. Please make sure you review the keywords in this PowerPoint as well as any other video that you are required to view. When you have finished reviewing, please go to Google Classroom and take your quiz on Google Form. Remember, no one to the right or left of you should be reviewing or taking the quiz. When you have finished the quiz, please return to Google Classroom for your next task. Congratulations, you have reached the end of this part two PowerPoint. Please return back to the website to find what your next step is. And as always, thank you for watching and participating.